I mean, the internet empowers, has the ability to empower people and it empowers some people for good and it empowers some people for bad. I mean, you know, in terms of black rights, um, Native American, indigenous people's rights, in terms of gay rights, um, trans rights, the internet has been very vocal um, in terms of sort of normalizing that stuff. Whereas, you know, I'm old enough to remember, like I didn't have a computer until I was in my 20s. Um, so I very distinctly remember a time when there was no widely available internet um, in a way that those things were not able to be discussed before everybody had this forum to just communicate with people <clears throat> of different lifestyles, of different ethnicities in different countries um, about this stuff. By the same token, I think there are a lot of people that now feel particularly sort of heterosexual uh, Anglo-Saxon white men um, Christian white men who, you know, kind of thought that they were hot shit and the narrative was that they kind of ruled the country. Um, and that is changing and they're trying very hard to protect what's theirs, even though the world has already changed and there was never a point in time when they were the shit. <laughs> um, so it, it, I think the sort of alt-right, um, you know, conservatism is really a reaction to the fact that it has really become this global diverse um, world just with an array of different people that are all, you know, kind of fighting for equal rights. So it's fear. A lot of it I yeah. think is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, public enemy said it in 1990, it's fear of a black planet, fear of a gay planet, fear of an immigrant planet, um, fear of a female planet. Um, it's, it's all this stuff, you know, cause they're woman hating, racist, homophobic, uh, assholes basically yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody that's not like them you know they're afraid of the thing that we have to remember is that we outnumber them by a very 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 large quantity yeah and i and i guess that there's sometimes like unfortunately that's that's been the case like it's easier it's easier for like someone to like do wrong or like be okay with something bad happening to someone that doesn't look like them or doesn't right. have the same background as them because they, they just, in their mind, it's just like, Oh, well they aren't, they aren't like me. They don't recognize like any kind of, it's harder for them to like recognize like the common humanity. Right. Behind that. Right. I mean, there are people, you know, I'm fortunate to have grown up and live in New York city where diversity kind of hits you as soon as you walk out the door. Yeah. But a lot of these folks who live in suburban areas or rural areas don't get the opportunity to go to school with people that are not like them. Uh, or if they, there are a handful of people that are not like them, they're the outcasts. Um, they don't get to experience what it's like to hang out with people who are not just other, you know, straight white dudes. Um, and, you know, when they get out into the world, if they ever get out into the world and see that things are a lot different in other places, it's, it's a fucking shock. Um, so people kind of stay in these silos and they, they retain these sort of um, really old school attitudes about the world um, because they've never experienced um, what other people are like, you know, themselves. They've never gone out into the world and tried to like uh, interact with or bond with people that are not like them. Yeah. And, and it's like on top of that, you know, there's a lot of, um, like stereotypes in the, the media or even in right. the, the news only showing like a certain stereotype. Or right. And it, it is certainly promoted by the media. And if all you knew of a certain type of people was what you saw on the news or heard in, in songs or saw in movies or TV shows, it's going to lead to a very kind of skewed uh, way of thinking. Yeah. And, and maybe people like unfortunately find like a kind of comfort in that sometimes like kind of compartmentalizing, like grouping a certain group of people here and like seeing them that way because it, it, it simplifies things in their mind. Like they can kind of just like categorize right. people. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, people don't there. I won't generalize. There are a lot of people that don't want to be challenged. And when you have preconceived notions of what somebody is just based on, something like gender or, or race or, or uh, sexual orientation. And then you meet a person and they defy those stereotypes that you have in your head. Like that'll mess your head up. And there are a lot of people who are not ready for that. 
So do you think the, the internet's like the main way to, to reach people in more isolated communities that might not know people of different backgrounds? It, it's the only way to do it if you can't travel. Um, I mean, I, again, like I've lived in cities my entire life. I've never, I mean, you know, I've never really lived in a suburb. I've never lived in, I've certainly never lived in a rural area. Um, so I, I, I've never been in a place where it's been hard for me to get to like a city because I've always been in a city. Um, but there are people who, you know, in Nebraska and Iowa and, you know, I mean, look, parts of New York, if you go upstate New York, um, you know, go up to Syracuse or, or Albany or Buffalo. Oh well, yeah. Albany too. Um, you know, or Southern New Jersey or, you know, even places close to us, there are kind of rural communities there and, you know, not everybody that lives on Long Island even comes into New York city. 